going to invite you to the Lord's table, not because you must, but because you may. It's an invitation to grace, it's an invitation to God's love. And so today we're going to celebrate that love by just remembering what Jesus did on the cross. And that we're, by doing so, that we're testifying that we're not perfect, but that we sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ. And we desire to follow him. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 and 17, it says this. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a, partition, a participation in the body of Christ? Because there's one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. I'm just going to pray over the elements, and then we'll come up uh, side by side, and we'll come take our elements. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for sending your son Jesus as the ultimate display of love. We just pray a blessing over each of these elements. Help us to just remember who you are, Christ, and what you've done. So we just take this time as well to just meditate on what Jesus has done. And we just sit in reverence of awe of who you are. I just pray a blessing over these elements in Jesus' name. Amen. So you may come up. Jesus on the night that he was betrayed he took bread he gave it thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me let us partake and in the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, remembrance of me. Let us partake. And all God's people said, All right. Good morning. I'm Pastor Tim. If you're new here, welcome. And if you've been here before and uh, coming back, welcome. Um, this morning when we were in the prayer room, it was really awesome because it's just, there's joy in this house, right? And we just get to stand in the presence of God and just be in that place. And so, I uh, just welcome to the river, welcome those online. Um, thank you, worship team, for just ushering in the Holy Spirit, right? And just thank you for each one of you that are here today. I'm going to open in prayer first. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray, I just pray right now to just open our hearts and our ears for what you have for us. Father, I just pray an anointing over this message. I just pray you to strip anything that's of me away, that it just comes from you. So Holy Spirit, I just ask that you just use me in the fullness of who you are. I just pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, are we living in the last days? When evil will be called good and good will be called evil. Do you believe that we have an enemy that's very real and he's very much active today? In fact, he's more active. He's almost getting hyperactive because he knows his time is short. This message um, is, is on my heart because... 
I've walked through some of this valley that I'll share with you in a bit. But what I want to do, I want to give a disclaimer right off the bat. I'm not glorifying or I'm not focusing on what the enemy is doing. But we need to have discernment for these times. We need to have discernment. Do you guys agree on that? Amen. So what I want to do today is I want to expose the enemy. I want to expose the enemy and the poison enemy and give you enough knowledge to stay clear and avoid the presence of the occult and all of the ploys of Satan, right? And to develop discernment for the spiritual. Are we okay to do that? Good. Because we do not wage war in the flesh, but we wage war in the spirit. Guys, we live in an absolute spiritual realm. Right? And we walk in it. And we, the kingdom of light, and there's a kingdom of darkness. And they've been waging war before we were created. We need to understand that. 1 Peter 5, 8, the devil, right? Satan, which is the adversary. Who prowls around like a lion looking for someone to devour. He is a real created being. He's a real created being, meaning, listen, he is limited. He is a created being. God created him. He's a limited being. He's not omnipresent, which means he can't be everywhere at once. If you, if you hear that, it's a load of crap. He's not omni, omnipotent either, which means he does not, he's not all-knowing. He's not also all-powerful. He cannot be everywhere at once, nor can he hear our thoughts. We need to understand that. He is a living being and he's restricted. And you need to understand he was an angel of light and he still walks around masquerading as an angel of light. And he was created being by God and he had a will like ours. His will was tainted and he became prideful, thinking he was more than and wanted to be like God. So he tricked many other angels to follow him, right? And God was not pleased and he banished him from heaven along with those fallen angels. Now they're called demons. They were thrown into the abyss specifically for them, which is called hell. Hell was their punishment. So here comes man. God created something beautiful. He said we are created wonderfully in his image. So it makes sense that the devil would try to destroy the created being called mankind. So that the worship of the Lord would be broken. <laughs> you see, this is still the enemy's tactic today. It's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. What he wants to do is draw us away from the creator and worship the created. That's the world, the systems of the world. Those idolatry things, the occult, the things that draw us supernaturally in, right? Now we know in scripture it tells us that he is a thief and a liar and he's the father of lies. That's why they call him Beelzebub. He's the father of flies too, right? Which, which is the lord of the dung. Which means there's a load of crap. Right? There's no truth in him so he's a deceiver. And he's always been a deceiver. And this is why we need to have spiritual discernment. Right? Some of us followers, Christians today, right? Do we really believe in the spiritual realm? Some people still walk in here but don't believe that there's a spiritual realm. There is a spiritual realm. And that is the war that's waging all the time. Now I want to share something with you. 
And the reason why, you'll see why this is on my heart. You'll see I'm a little bit fired up. And I'm fired up because I can't hear you guys. I know for some of you this might be hard to hear. <laughs> or some of you may be walked, have walked through this same path. Or maybe some of you here listening here are wrestling in this place. But what I want to share with you right now, and I want you to hear my heart in my story. You see, I had a whole bunch of crap happen to me when I was younger. And, and I know the devil was trying to take everything away from me because he knew there was a call on my life. Now, I had a whole bunch of tra tragic things happen in my life. And, and all of these things happened in suffering and innocence. And I became an angry child. I became confused. I became disoriented. I, was, I had spirit of rejection on me, and I had a spirit of dejection on me, that I was dejected. You see, and then the enemy likes to do something. He likes to take your, angry, your anger and start fueling it. He likes pouring gasoline on that. And so started something that happened in my life. I had this anger. I had this volatility to me that wasn't healthy. See, I was seeking God, but I was never understanding. I grew up in, uh, in, in a different church with different thought patterns, and I was even serving in that church as a kid. Like I said before, I was, I was the angel on one, one hand and then I was the devil on the other. And in that place of all my pain, I had no place to put it. I didn't know where to put all my pain, all this torment that I was having. And then somebody introduced me to something that I'd never been introduced to before actually started listening to some music that I never listened to before. And there was something so dark and sinister in it. It actually drew me in. And I love music. <laughs> and of course, that's the way the enemy would use a, a way to get in. All of a sudden, something triggered in me that the darkness, the hate, all of those things that I did not like started being brought to the surface. And I started seeking more and more and more. And then I realized there was a supernatural place. Not a holy supernatural place. An unholy supernatural place. Into the supernatural realm. See, I found it through music first. And then I started watching movies. <laughs> and then I started reading books. And then I was hooked in. And the music got worse and worse. And I didn't realize what I was worshiping when I was listening to this music. In fact, some of the music I was listening to <laughs> was straight up satanic. Entered my path. I was not living for the Lord. I was serving darkness. Now, I don't want to go in a whole whack load into that, but I was being used heavily by the enemy. Being used in a way I never even thought possible. And I did not understand the doors that I opened to the demonic. And I was wrestling in the spirit between flesh and spirit all the time. And I want to tell you, I've seen manifestations of the spirit. And in fact, that was one of the things that God showed me as he showed me some of the demonic. Kind of give me a bit of a wake up call. And it did, it manifested in different ways. And I started seeing in the spirit world. And nope, I wasn't high. <laughs> I wasn't high, but my eyes were opened. I didn't realize that that was actually a gift from God. 
You see, in that place, I really got to see the enemy. I got to hear the lies. I got to be, I got drawn into this place that was not healthy. In fact, it was death. And it felt like death. But I think by God's grace, I came to this place where I was tired of it and I was sick of the BS. And I seen how false the devil actually is. So I'm going to tell you here and now, at, that, at one point I gave my soul to Satan. But when God turned me around, <laughs> here's the coolest part. The devil can never own your soul. It was never his in the first place. It's God's. He created it. And that is the truth. But when I turned from that nightmare, <laughs> often, often the enemy still tries to put me back there, see where you were before. <laughs> he does that. He, that's one of his things. Now I want to tell you this. Where I was before, it's all garbage. It's all lies. And I'm telling you this. Because the enemy makes a promise. And that promise is full of BS. It's false. He deceiver, he's a deceiver. He doesn't even have the authority. He has to ask God for the authority to do things. We don't, maybe we don't see that. And if you look in the book of Job, you will see that. Right? He also, when... <laughs> When Peter is there and, and, and him and Jesus are asking, Jesus tells Peter, Satan's asked to sift you like wheat, which means you give him permission. What I see today breaks my heart. I see a widespread growth of the occult and all of this demonic activity, and it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Like there's a glorification of the occult. Satan is being glorified in this time. Right? And satanic activity is on the rise. It's not even hidden anymore. It used to be hidden and kind of in the background. It's it's in your face. You see, it's because I came from this encampment that I see what the enemy is trying to do. And it sickens me. It makes me honestly angry. So you see, I'm fired up. I'm stirred up because it does. It makes me angry. Even 30, 40 years ago, this activity has increased. And even in, in the last five years, I've seen it even more so. There's, there's more pop, pop satanic music. Even pop music is jumping in on satanic activity and all of these things. There's satanic street gangs. There's an increase in, in worship of Satan. Right? And there's a widespread growth of the occult and witchcraft in entertainment. It's everywhere. A couple of years back, I was watching these two little kids on YouTube. And they're, they're listening to, I'm a little teapot. But there are demons pouring out. The teapot was like a demon pouring out blood into another cup. It was disgusting. It totally disgusted me. That's the world where everything is being shoved down. <laughs> you see... Many people don't take the, the, this part of spiritually, this part of spirituality, reality, as reality. They laugh off the notion, right, of the power of evil as actually part of the real world in which we live in. It is part of our real world. We should be taking this seriously, guys, because we are in a battle. We are in a battle. We are in a spiritual battle that's very real, and we exist in a world where the spiritual world in which we cannot see. See, that, that same influence, that demonic influence, is, is very real, and it constitutes a danger that threats our spiritual being as well. 
right? And like I said, I just want to give you enough knowledge to be able to at least suspect the presence of the occult and walk in discernment so you can avoid it completely. Look, in Ephesians 1, 3 through 10, a uh, little bit small there, but I'm going to paraphrase this. Paul tells us that God chose us in Jesus. Before the world began, we are called to be holy without sin in his sight. God called us to be his children through Jesus. And in Jesus, through his blood, we've been saved and our sins forgiven. This is how generous our God, our Father, has been with us. And he's given us the wisdom to understand this mystery and this plan that he revealed to us in Christ Jesus. See, we are born again. And we are baptized and being conformed into the likeness of Christ. In our new life, we have renounced all the works of Satan, right? And the empty promises of his kingdom of darkness. In fact, Jesus took the keys to death, right? But by obedience of baptism, we, prof we profess our faith in Jesus and in the church, which we got to witness last week. Now, the kingdom of God is absolutely opposed to Satan's kingdom. That's why there's a war waging as we speak right now. There is an angels of armies battling right now in that realm. And salvation in Jesus presupposes our rejection of the kingdom of darkness. Our life through, though, is in spiritual warfare. So in the first letter of John, so 1 John 5, 18 and 20, John tells us two things. First of all, he tells us we who are born of God, which we just talked about by baptism and of the Holy Spirit, are protected by God so the evil one cannot touch us. But he also tells us that the whole world is under the evil one. So I want you to understand this. The evil one can tempt us, right? But he cannot touch us directly unless we open the door for him. You understand that? That means he cannot possess us, but we can be under demonic influence. Church, we should not fear Satan. We need to understand that. We shouldn't fear him. Nor should we be constantly be looking for him or what he is doing, right? Or hyper-focused on what he's doing in the ordinary happenings of our life. We shouldn't be focused on that. But we do need to have discernment. We need to understand. And we need to understand who he is and what he is and what he is doing. And understand that there is a dangerous war and we're in the middle of it. We are in the middle of it. Our souls are in the middle of that war. And the devil has a mission. <laughs> That's why we need spiritual armor. God tells us in Ephesians, put on the spiritual armor. He doesn't say fight. He says put on the armor and pray and stand firm. Right? And the devil is an adversary, which means we have a mortal enemy. And we need to understand this. Church, we need to understand we can love people because we need to understand people are not our enemy. People are not our enemy. The devil is. But people can be heavily influenced. Right? Just as Jesus tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. See, he is, he's prowling around looking for someone to devour, right? As Pastor Joel said when he came here, he said he's a mouse with a megaphone. But he is looking to destroy our relationship with God, and he's going to do that any way he can. And with Jesus, and for us to not walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, why? Why? Because when we carry the very, name of Lord, the very name of the Lord Jesus, he is the name above every other name. 
the King of kings, the Lord of lords. So that means that we have legal authority. Listen to this. We have legal authority in the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. And what is the kingdom of Satan? What is the kingdom of darkness like? It is a lie that seeks to resemble the kingdom of God. It is a counterfeit. Look at Isaiah 14, 12 to 15. (laughs) How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth. You once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly of the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds and I will make myself like the most high. Wow. Do you see those eyes in there? (laughs) What's the middle of pride? It's I. But here's the response. But you are brought down into the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. There is a hell... There is a hell, and it's a place for a devil and his demons, fallen angels. Listen, church, hell was never meant for mankind. But sin entered in, and it was a place given to those who reject Jesus. It's about Satan, and the prophet tells us that his heart, in his heart, Satan is determined to be like God. But his kingdom is a lie. It's false. It's counterfeit. In the kingdom of darkness, there is false worship and adoration. There's even evil prayers, evil worship. And he offers false happiness and false peace. And he promises to give you everything. And then when it does, it comes with a price. With great sacrifice and pain and then he torments you then instead of eternal life he only brings death and punishment and then he holds out a dark wisdom and knowledge that's how he tempted Adam and Eve Satan said no God knows well that the moment you eat it, the forbidden fruit, your eyes will be open. You'll be like gods who know what is good and what is bad. In his kingdom, Satan also offers us a health that's unto death and a protection that's false. He says, surely you will not die. Right? He lied to them right off the bat. But you see, as we picture angels of heaven singing and worshiping God, there's also special music that's evil in the kingdom of darkness. I know this is a heavy topic. See, Satan's kingdom is a lie, and he wants to be like God. In the very first of the Ten Commandments, what does God say? God told Moses, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Paul tells us to be on guard in 1 Timothy 4.1. It says, the Spirit says clearly that some men will abandon their faith in later times. I'm telling you right now, I heard something the other day that broke my heart. John Bevere was in an interview And he said in the last 10 years, Barna did a study, in the last 10 years, 80 million Christians have fallen away in America alone. They started going into atheism, spiritualism, and just lost. Walking away. That is terrifying. That is terrifying. I hate to tell you, it's here too. It's here too. That breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. Be 
Because John 10, 10 says this, what does a thief come to do? Kill and destroy. And what does that even mean? That means he's attempting to take good things God, that God created and either steal them by snatching people from God, kill them, right? Intention, enticing humans towards self-harm or to destroy them. Destroying churches through persecution. See, killing is an act of causing death. <laughs> and that act causes loss of life or consciousness. But rather that the act causes loss of remaining abilities. Thief <laughs> is stealing, right? It's an, it's an, it's an action or an offense <laughs> of taking another person's property without permission or legal right and without intending to return it. And destroy is putting the end of existence of something by damaging or attacking it. And then just some of these verbs that go, it's deface, scar, injure, harm, devastate, damage, disrupt, undo, upset, frustrate, crush, sabotage. Wow. When you pull all that together, it also means to ruin someone emotionally or spiritually or defeat someone utterly. And I want to tell you, we're also in this place where witchcraft is abundant. There is abundance of witchcraft. And witchcraft is, comes from the spirit of rebellion. And it is straight up demonic. I'm calling a spade a spade. It's straight up demonic. You see, the, the, the actual meaning of witchcraft is practice of magic, especially for evil purposes. That means going into the supernatural, into the spiritual realm that was never meant to be going into. Right? And it's also bewitching or fascinating attraction or charm. So here's an interesting fact. So malicif maleficium is a Latin term. Uh, it's an act of witchcraft performed with the intention of causing damage or injury of the resultant harm to someone. So in general term applies to any magical act intended to cause harm or death to people or proper property. So that's where you get the word maleficent from. And there's two sources of power, spiritual power. There's God and Satan. And Satan has only the power that God allows him to have. We need to understand this. But it is considerable. It is considerable. To seek spirituality, knowledge, or power apart from God is idolatry. And it's closely related to witchcraft. First Samuel 15, 23, it says, For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. You see, witchcraft is Satan's realm. And he excels in counterfeiting what God does. Just look at the, go back to, into Exodus, when we look at when Moses was performing all these acts, their witches, their sorcerers, were mimicking them to a certain point. Then they could not do it anymore, and God excelled and exceeded over those things that showed his sovereignty over and above all of these things. So he's actually showing his strength over the counterfeits. And that occult, because it's a cultish practice, it means secret or hidden, mysterious, right? Secret supernatural. And, and witchcraft or superstitious magic is used to produce effects that are beyond the power of man. And these effects may be good or bad and brought about by the use of magical words, gestures, herbs, powders, blah, blah, blah. Right? There's even in witchcraft where they are invoking demons and, and things like that. You see, today... <laughs> Witches can be found almost anywhere. 
and they're often presented in a positive light. I've even heard of Christian witches. I won't even go there. But it's to remember everyone involved is in false worship, seeking forbidden knowledge or using forbidden power should be absolutely avoided. We love them, but we should avoid those things. See, when we talk about forbidden knowledge, we simply mean knowledge that's not obtained outside of God's influence or the normal way that human beings obtain knowledge. Knowledge. None of us knows the future. That's why sometimes they'll say there's false prophets. So that's a, that's a whole different realm. But right, and we still need to have discernment. There's one thing to seek knowledge of the future or intimate knowledge about another person apart from God, right? And through the help of clairvoyance or spirits, that's what they mean by forbidden knowledge. And we see that in Saul. He sought out a medium instead of returning to God for his place, right? So forbidden power is a magical power that produces effects apart from God and is beyond ordinary human means. In Leviticus 19.31, right? It says, do not go to mediums or consult fortune tellers for you will be defiled by them, which means you opened a doorway and something's going to attach. I, the Lord, am your God. And then Leviticus 20, verse 6, it says, Should anyone turn to mediums or fortune tellers and follow their wants and ways, I will turn such a one and cut him off from his people. First Corinthians 10, 20. It says, no, I imply what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participation with demons. See, in a world, a world in rebellion against God will have a skewed perspective and embrace a topsy-turvy morality. There are many people today that still call evil good and good evil as they promote behaviors in the Bible that are called sinful. That is the spirit of rebellion and witchcraft in the very same spirit. Apart from God, our value system will always be jumbled and we will, be con will confuse sweetness and bitterness, light and darkness, good and evil. We will label biblical morality as intolerant and oppressive and we will take offense at the truth that Jesus is the only way to salvation. How many times have you shared with Jesus and like, no, I got my own way to God. I, I can do it this way. There's many ways to God. There isn't. There's only one way. Right? Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. That's John 3.20. And we're living in a world where offenses will come quickly and hearts will grow cold. Are we living in the last days when evil will be called good and good will be called evil? Are we living in those days? Isaiah 5.20, Woe to those who call good evil, or evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Calling good and evil is a sure sign of spiritual wickedness at work. Okay? The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of of God. Today, evil is good. We thought the day would never come. When what is called good is now called evil, and what used to be called evil is now called good. How twisted is that? How twisted is that? Up is down, and down is up, and black is white, and white is black. The fact is, evil and good are opposites of one another but not when the world sees evil as a good thing and good things as evil. But that's just where we stand today. And it seems certain that we're in the last days. And I hate to tell you, this trend's only going to grow worse. It's very much like the days of Jeremiah when people are wise and doing evil, but how to do good they do not know, Jeremiah 4.22.
the world definitely has it backwards. Because evil can never be good and good can never be evil. God shows us from a word, that, in his word, that the world has it backwards because we are to hate evil and love good. <laughs> are we living out these last days? Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 3 1, and that is just what our world is today. In the last days, there will come times of difficulty. And that's just what our world is today. Looking at the news today, what we see, people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good. And in the scripture there, it also says, without love and unholy. And they'll be, lo they'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with these such people. Are we living in the last days? We need discernment in these last days. We need discernment. That's the ability to judge well. Not judge people, but to judge between the Spirit. Right? That's, uh, in Christian context, the perception is in, in the absence of judgment with a view of obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding. We need the Holy Spirit to discern. Some of us are given that spiritual gift, but we need the Holy Spirit to do that. That's one of the cool things. As I walk through all of that junk, God gave me this, just the eyes to see in the spirit. That's why I said that was a gift that I was able to see in that spirit. So I, I'm able to discern between spirits because Christ has given me that gift through all my suffering and all of those things, right? So let's go to verse 10 because he's telling this to Timothy He's in the same place, except they're dealing with false teachers and false other things. But he says, you, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings. And this is Paul saying, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact... Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Here's our charge. But as for you, continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you've learned it. And how from infancy you've known the Holy Scriptures were able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And that's, he's talking to Timothy as he's a young Christian there. All Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And now I want to add this. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4. Right in, the, right in the beginning here, look. In the presence of God and in Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, 
I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. And I might add, love in love. Remembering that we wage not war against flesh and blood, but we war against principalities and all of those things. It is not people. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine, instead suit their own desires, and they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. (laughs) They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, I'm going to add this paraphrase, have discernment. Keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, and discharge all the duties of your ministry. Stay firm. Put on your armor. Stand firm and pray and keep going. You see, discernment means cutting through the confusion over right and wrong and enlightening spiritual darkened minds. Right? In Psalm 119, 104. I gain understanding from your precepts. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light on my path. In our fallen condition where we are right now. We as humans cannot accurately determine what is right or wrong. Everything is upside down. Only God can give definitive answers on good and evil. That's why it says the Bible is God-breathed. Only certain source of providing guidance to mankind. How backwards we are in this world. (laughs) But not so with the church. His church. We know what is good and we know what is evil from Scripture. We don't have to rationalize or compromise since we know God's Word and God Himself is good. Amen? God is good and He directs us to do always good. Despite the fact the world sees it as an evil thing. Church, until the day that Jesus arises, things are only going to get worse. Until He comes. It's not much wonder that many believers will face tribulation. Which means, or we can be put to death, right? Because we're good. And to know the good, we need to put our trust in Christ and the word of God. Only God is good. The world not so. Because today, perhaps more than any time in history, the world calls evil good. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So the opposite of all of those things is the fruits of the Spirit. If you read today's uh, daily devotional, it, it kind of ties into some of that. But the fruits of the Spirit are love, kindness, all of those things that are the opposite to what the world is upside down in right now. So let us hold to our faith in the Lord Jesus and His church. Amen? Let us lean into discernment in this time. We need spiritual discernment. And that's going to be my prayer for you guys. You see, our salvation is brought to us by Jesus and Jesus alone. Through prayer, by reading and studying the word, and through the presence of Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know any other God that displays his love for us. Because God displayed his love by he put his only one and only son on the cross for us that he shall die for us. The enemy has not done that. He's just thrown us to the pit. God so loved us that he gave his one and only son 
that none shall perish, but have eternal life. And we need to stand on that promise of who God is and what he's done. And that he loves us so much and cares for us so much. That he does not want us to be stuck in our condition, but yet he wants to take us out of our condition. And he's made that way. Amen. He's made that way. Two things I want to take. I want to do this today. First, I want to pray for spiritual discernment for us. We need that. I think we need to walk in that all the time. And the second thing, if you've been in, involved in a cult, I want to call that off right now. I want to break that stronghold. We talked about chain breaking this morning. We we sang about it. Because only God can break those chains, and we need to renounce any of those idolatry practices. So I'm going to start with this. I'm just going to pray into this. Father, we just thank you for this day. Father, you are the same today as you were yesterday and you are tomorrow. Since the beginning of mankind, and you sought to have a relationship with your creation to instruct us in the way that we ought to go. Father, today we pray for discernment. We pray that the Holy Spirit that indwells within us will give us a peace beyond understanding to know precisely when something is you. I pray for our ears to hear clearly your voice through all the clamoring of other voices so that we know it's from you and when something is not. Father, we want to be obedient to your call in our lives. We pray for such discernment to not only make wise choices, but in the course of it all, that we know we can trust your guiding hand. Father, too, I just pray for anyone who maybe have delved in, in witchcraft and has not released that yet, closed that door, And, it, and if that's you, I just ask you to just renounce that spirit of witchcraft, all of those things. And we do that right now. I renounce all that spirit of witchcraft, the occult, all of those things <laughs> that are not of you, God. We call those off. We call off those unholy assignments, those unholy things, and we close the door and we renounce them in Jesus' mighty name. The name above every other name. The Lord God Most High. With his authority, we smash those strongholds over each person here and in this community. We break off that wicked, evil spirit of rebellion and witchcraft in our community, in our lives. We just give that to you in your mighty name. In freedom we walk. In Jesus' name.